Many woodworkers would like you to believe they dovetail every joint together, but there's still a place for screws in many woodworking projects, especially when you want something to come back apart later or when you have to attach metal hardware. But too many woodworkers just grab a bunch of drywall screws and drive them in willy-nilly. They may be fine for jigs and shop projects, but if you want a piece of furniture to last, you have to know what you're doing. This is a wood screw. I know modern manufacturers slap that label on all sorts of different screws, and I'm not saying their screws won't work. But there's a reason this screw was designed this way and has remained unchanged for generations. The most striking detail is the partially threaded shaft. You don't want threads digging into the top workpiece, only the bottom one. If you have threads in the top workpiece, they may cause the screw head to seat before the upper and lower workpieces are drawn tight together. The partially threaded shaft is tried and true technology. If you want a very tight joint, especially with hardwoods, this is the way to get it. But to take advantage, you have to bore a proper pilot hole, which has three parts to it. You have a narrow hole in the lower workpiece for the threads to grip in. You have a larger hole in the upper workpiece for the shaft to move freely inside. And you have a tapered countersunk hole for the head. Today we do have special drill bits that will bore all three parts at the same time. Sometimes. It depends because sometimes those drill bits do not have a long enough shaft portion or the large portion of the bit. Let me show you how it was done 150 years ago. The first step was to bore the hole for the threads to grip in. That bit should be as large as the lower part of the screw's shaft that you can just barely see inside the threads. You want to keep that part from splitting the workpiece, but you don't want it wider than the threads themselves or they won't have any wood to dig into. You bore that hole through both layers, even though you're going to enlarge the hole in the upper layer next. For that upper layer hole, you need another bit that's larger than the threads. We'll use the smaller hole we just bored as a guide to properly locate the larger hole with the larger bit, which we bore all the way through the upper workpiece. Finally, a countersink bit is used to set the head beneath the surface. If a countersink bit wasn't available, a gouge would be used to do the job. Wood screws were rarely used where they'd be seen, so a messy countersink wasn't that big of a concern. But a skilled carpenter could make a good looking countersink with a gouge or even a chisel. Now that covers regular everyday screw joinery. But since you stuck with me this far into the video, I'm going to share an advanced technique called offset screwing. An offset screw joint was used to draw two work pieces tightly together in two directions, such as putting one piece into a rabbit. For this joint to be really strong, the mating workpiece must be tight against the face and the shoulder of the rabbit. Here's how to do that with offset screwing. I bored the larger hole in the upper workpiece first this time. Then I slipped the screws into the holes, aligned my workpiece on the top of the mating workpiece, and used the points of the screws to mark light impressions in that lower workpiece. Then I disassembled the joint and I use an awl to mark new impressions on the opposite side of those first little dimples from where the shoulder of the joint will be. Now when I drive my screws, it will pull that joint together tightly in both directions. Of course, the key to this technique is to use proper wood screws and an old-timey three-step process for good pilot holes that now you know how to do. 